marriage. You don't know that? Say that every man has his own wife. I'm going to go to verse 19. Let's go to chapter 19 and I'm going back to the book of Genesis. Is that all right? I just want to read this out of the uh, Matthew here. Uh, chapter 19 and really the fourth verse. I might be a few. Uh, I just want to talk to you about that. You see, in chapter 19, when you read chapter 19, you'll see where, the, where Jesus was out doing good, blessing people and People are being blessed and all this shit. What happened? The Pharisees, they, they, they walked in there and they tried to entrap him with the family with what Moses had said and what Moses had did. And they were looking for a way to entrap him to go against what Moses had said. So when you read down to the four verse, it said, He answered and said unto them, talking about the Pharisees, Have you not read? That he, that he which made them at the beginning made male and female. Huh? All right, he made them. He put them together. Huh? Amen. And uh, the field verse say, and say, for this cause shall a man leave his wife, leave his mother and father, and cleave to what? Cleave to his why? And they are no more twain shall be one flesh. And I'll leave that now going back to uh, James. Oh, James. One twenty-seven. Okay. One and, and twenty-seven. You see, Satan don't want marriage to work. Satan don't want family, y'all. Satan do not want families to come together the way that God made them and intended them to be. He don't want that. Satan was there when Adam and Eve was in the garden. And as you read from the first verse of that, First chapter. I'm not going to go up there. I'm going to go down to 27 verse. So God created man in his own image. Now, you know, y'all you, you know how God look? Now, I'm sorry. How many of y'all know how God look? Huh? I, you know, I'm going to talk back. God created us in his own image. When you want to see God image, go look in the mirror. You look like God. Look. He created you in his own image. He didn't make you like a beast. He made you in his own image. So the word says, God created man in his own image. In the image of God created him, created he, him, male, female, created him. So look at women and men, when y'all look in the mirror, and you trying to see how God look, look at yourself. That's the way God look. He created you in his own image. So now, and he blessed you when he created you. God blessed Adam and Eve when he created them. And the Bible says that 28 says, and he blessed them. God said unto them, be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fishes of the sea, the fowls of the air, and over all, and over every living thing that moves on the face of the earth. Now you all see it. God created woman and man, made man, man created woman and man, and gave us authority over everything. Huh? Amen. Woman and man. Now, look at Adam and Eve created equal. I mean, Adam was made from God, then he made God made uh, Eve, created Eve out of real. Now, 
and they had equal, they were equal. Did y'all know that? Amen. Amen. He might say, well, he got real on the other side, but yeah, but he made them what equal and gave them what dominion over everything that moves up on the face of the earth. Woman, man. Huh? Great, great vision. Woman, man. Everything that moves up on the face of the earth. Why? Because God loved his creation. So, I want you to know that God did a good job in creating us. He made us equal. Male, female, he, he, that's what he did. Genesis 2 and 18 say, And the Lord said, um, The Lord said, It is not good that man shall be alone. I will make him a help me for him. Look at God made us, made the woman to help us. A help me for us. The way I got real, I decided that she wouldn't be behind. He didn't take it out the back or the front. Maybe it'd be right by our side. How many know that we cannot, you really can't be prosperous a lot of people think a lot of money, million dollars, ten million dollars, you're a profit man. No. But in order to be profitable, you got to, a man have to have a help me. I ain't telling you all this, you have to go out there and try to find a woman and just marry her because the Bible says I need to help me. No, you need to find your real. Huh? Amen. And then when you find your real, you can marry her. You don't need to find any woman. Plenty of women out to be married. Let me tell you, a lot of people are married and God got nothing to do with it. Amen. God did not ordain it. Nothing to do with it. You married because you want to marry, because I think I love him or her. And you ain't put God nowhere in that picture. God got to be in the picture. He created you, He put you together, Adam and Eve together. And he said, uh, you know, I read it, 19, that wasn't good for you to be alone. You need a wife. You need a wife. You need somebody to help you. And we have to let them help us. Genesis 2 and 24. Therefore shall a man leave his wife. See, I just read it over uh, Matthew 19. Read it again again. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and cleave to unto his wife. And they shall be what? One flesh. Amen. One flesh. You know y'all say get along and y'all start acting like, talking alike, thinking alike, and all this shit. Uh, you one flesh. What hurt? Minister Day is going to hurt the other day. What hurt the other day is going to hurt Minister Day. Why? Because they want flesh. Amen. You all know that? Amen. What hurt Minister Brown is going to hurt Sister Brown. Amen. What hurt Sister Brown is going to hurt Minister Brown. Why? Because you want flesh. God and me, y'all came together now. And now y'all want flesh now. And so God, uh, you won. Amen. In other words, you love your flesh, don't you? Amen. Now, the devil don't want that to happen. Let me just read it. It is man part to cleanse to, to clean, stick to his act, to be united, to remain faithful to his wife. God plans that they should love, huh? They should love compliment and help him. You gotta love him, you gotta help him, as well as each other. Yeah. You gotta love, help one another. 
Why? Because that's a triumph as we as we're between heaven and earth. There's a triangle between what? Heaven and earth, just like between man and wife. We got to love one another. You got to be with one another. You got to care for one another. And you got to have a fellowship. And you have to have a love. You got to have a fellowship, close relationship, fellowship with God in order to have uh, the love that God has for you. You got to have a relationship with each other. I already know if you don't have a relationship with each other, you got a problem. How many of y'all know that? Relationships is not easy all the time. Relationship is give and take. Did y'all know that? Relationship is not one sided that I say everything, do everything, got to have my way. No, it's give and take. God made Eve from the real of Adam. Side. To walk beside him as a helper. And he gave them dominion, look at it now, over all the works of his hand. It's all, look, Adam and Eve, he gave them dominion, not just give it to Adam, he gave it to Adam and Eve dominion of all the works of what? His hand. It was only part of the curse after eating of the forbidden fruit that he was to be subject to Adam. God made him eat. But God had to give her something for what she did at part of the curse. She told her to eat the fruit and he ate it. And now she is subject, woman is subject to man. Now, wait a minute. I know a lot of people say, well, yo, woman, that's all people want to read sometimes. Woman subject to man. Woman subject to man. But look, Jesus came on the scene, y'all. I wish I had time to do all this year. But Jesus came on the scene and fixed everything. Did y'all know that? So she was served down. Uh, let's go to Colossians. Galatians 3 and 13. This Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For ye are all the children of who? God. By faith. Jesus came down to redeem us from the law. Now, the woman has her rights in Christ. That's why I say you got to be in Christ, y'all. You got to be in Christ in order to live. In Christ, in, let me see, faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ, have put on Christ, there is neither bond nor free. There is neither male or female for you are all one in where? In Christ. So when Jesus came down and died uh, we, we received the Holy Ghost and all and make us back equal again. Woman is equal to man through the Holy Ghost. Y'all know that? When she received Christ she repented. They repented. Now she's equal to man. So now when you read that passage there about She's subject to him. You're subject to him, but you're equal. Huh? You're equal. Both of you are obligated to one another. Let me see if I get this here. Corinthians 11 and 9, 11, 9 and 12. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. The woman is the glory of the Man. Do y'all know that? Y'all you, you, you know a woman is out of glory? Y'all know that? Huh? Amen. You got to understand it. A woman is your glory. You go there, you see a woman in any kind of way, and all this year, oh, no, no, no. No, no. The woman is your glory. Now, that is your glory. And you ought to really take care of what your glory is.
because she was created to help you. Nevertheless, nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman. Y'all hear that? Nevertheless, the man is without the woman. Neither the woman is without the man. It is the Lord. For as the woman is of the man, even so the man also by the woman. But all things of God. Huh? Well, God put that thing equal. It's still equal again. God got you on equal basis again. All down through the ages. Through the ages, God. <clears throat> through the ages, God has used both men and women in special ways. He has used the woman as a profiteer, even as a judge over Israel. He used the woman to save the Jews from extinction. He brought forth the savior of the world through a woman. Brought forth the savior of the world through a woman. First person to see him risen the risen Christ was the woman. I'm just trying to get y'all to see. See, everybody, a lot of times, y'all, we, we're trying to take over and say that God don't need, I don't need a woman. You need a woman, and the woman needs you. So God now that we've been saved, like, you know, like my, what I read it, through Christ, we've been saved now through the Holy Ghost and received Christ without a person saved. So now we are back on equal terms in Christ Jesus. There is not male or female in Christ Jesus, but we are on what equal turn in the spirit of God. You might look at me as a male, look at her as a female, that's fine. That's the way God made it. But now in Christ Jesus, we are on equal turn. You're on equal turn, Christ Jesus. Now look, all organizations have to have a head. Besides, office. So God appointed the man to be the head of the house. See, God appointed to be the head of the house. So we're going to work on equal, equal term, equal basis. Now, look at this part. A wise man realized that he is not an authority on every subject. And thus, delegate responsibility to knowledgeable people under him. Huh? You're not a part of every subject. You got to delegate responsibility to people who are under you. You got to delegate their responsibility. You do not run. In other words, you delegate responsibility. You don't want somebody to come to every little thing. You have to run and get your approval. In other words, you do not run for every decision. But use their education, experience, and common sense to accomplish the job for the best of the organization, best of the family, and for his approval. Now, let me tell you, God made us equal from the beginning. Now, Jesus came down and died on the cross, and now, when we receive the Holy Ghost, we become equal again. Both of us say, my wife and I say that we are equal. Again, in Christ Jesus, all the way other house. But uh, I listen to her. Always there. Might not do everything she said, but I listen to what she has to say. And so God put us back on equal basis through the Holy Ghost. Again, Ephesians 5 and 33 say this. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And a servant of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wife be subject to their husband in everything. Now, I'm going to stop right there. Everything. That's everything that 
is right. Let me tell you something. If you wrong, husband, you wrong, and you trying to make your wife do something, trying, then she's not subject. We talking about righteous, subject to the right. If you if I'm right, my wife's subject to me. But if I'm wrong, she can't follow me. Did y'all know that? She can't follow me. So, you're a servant to your husband. If he's right. And he might present it to himself in the glory of the church. Not having spots or rings or any such thing but that it should be holy without women. <clears throat> so are men to love their wives as their own body. Y'all ain't gonna be by no harm in you. You ain't gonna put your body, you ain't gonna do it. You, you gonna love, you love your body. You gotta love your wife the same way, right? This is right, y'all. I tell you that now. I know I'm right. For the word sake. You got to love your wife the same way. Now, what a man should do? Love his wife. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh. But he nurtured and cheered, cheered it, even as the Lord, the church. For we are members of the body of his flesh and of his bone. Let everyone be, let, let everyone of you in particular so love. Let everyone of you in particular. So love his wife even as himself. The wives see that see that the husband, the wife, see that she reverence her husband, submitting yourself one to another. There again, submit yourself one to another in the fear of God. See, it ain't saying uh Wives, submit yourself to the husband, but you submit yourself to one another in the fear of God. So that way, that take away all the balls. That take away my balls with my wife. The balls with my wife. You might know, think that stuff too. And I'm here to hide. What I say go with this and that. But I find out on down through life that what I say don't always go. See, we're equal. And that's what I want you to see. The reverence for a husband. Submit yourself one to the other in the fear of the Lord. Some people think I don't fear God. Some men think I don't fear God. Some women think I don't fear God. But you got the fear of God in you because you've been born again. You've been saved again. The Holy Spirit lives in her. So we have a fear of God. And so I'm going to respect that woman. I'm going to reverence. She's going to have a reverence. I'm going to reverence her. In the fear of God, meaning that I'm gonna listen to her, huh? Because the two heads are better than one, huh? First Peter three and seven. Likewise, ye husbands dwell with the. I don't want y'all to hear this. Likewise, ye husbands dwell with them according to knowledge. I hope that has the knowledge. You all know that. Then again, knowledge is not. I'm the boss. I'm this. I'm this. I can do this shit. I can do that. Yeah, the devil like that. But I know I can't do a lot of things. Sometimes right now I quit talking to talk my wife. Yeah, I just stop talking. It's going to happen. So first Peter say what? Likewise, the husband 
dwell with them according to knowledge. Giving honor unto the wife. What did I say? Giving honor to what? You got to honor your wife. How many of y'all know that? As a wife, also have to honor you, but you got to honor her. As unto the what weaker unto the weaker vessel. Your wife is a weaker vessel. How many of y'all know that? Adam, Eve was weaker than Adam because the Satan the guys, all right, got her to do what he couldn't get Adam to do. So she was weaker. So now our wives are not as strong as we are. You don't know that I'm talking about physical. Amen. They're not as strong as you are physical. Not even in the word. Amen. You got to be. You want to be the head and the leader? You can't do like Adam did. My wife said, "Well, he ate the fruit, uh, and she told Adam." That's my wife, first of all. He told Adam uh, that she had ate the fruit, and she said, oh, you see? She just, my wife said, he just stuck it in his mouth. He just ate it. I don't know about all that. But he ate the fruit, but anyway, he, he ate it, didn't he? Amen. The wife is of the weaker vessel. So we have to understand that. So we're we'll what? Air with air together. That's why the Bible says, no more woman to win and play. Air together. As the grace of life. If you, your prayer, your air together, that the grace of life, that your prayer be not him. See, sometimes all your prayers are him. But the way you treat one another. You all know that? But the way you treat one another. Your prayers should be him. And so we don't want our prayers him. We want to love our wife. We want to love our children. We want to love our family. Why? Because the devil don't want us to love one another. 